All right. So this is the last one tackling the RC theory, uh, RC series for anyone who in our community who has uh, these boss pedals. Um, basically, it's more about mixing and getting a good sound out of this thing. So typically, um, you will need external pedals and you will need external things to make this sound good. Um, the trick to the RC300 is don't try and make everything after the RC300 sound good because uh, I'm telling you right now, you will fail. Uh, I have nonstop failed. I don't know anyone who gets it right. Um, don't try and figure out some extra like sub channel, like they have a sub thing and do stereo. And like this pedal is not designed to be useful. It is it is designed to set up your multi-tracks really well, but it is not designed to be useful. It like, just like I said in the previous video, the fact that this thing doesn't clear all the tracks when you need it to is so dumb. So dumb. Oh my God. Makes me so mad that they didn't do that. But, um, you know, you know, it'd be so funny if there is a secret button that you could have set up in the thing to make it fully clear. And I didn't know about it. And the whole time, oh, that would be funny as hell. So if someone in the comments does figure that out, that'd be the funniest shit ever. Anyway, so you want to make sure that you want to treat this as its own mixer. Don't use it as a mixer because it's sucky as a mixer. Don't don't mix my words. Uh, but you want to think of it as like, okay, this is a band and I need to set up this as a mixer and I need to blend all the sounds exactly how I want it. So if I want a heavy bass sound, I will make sure the bass sound that is coming into it is a heavy bass sound. And I will make sure that when I EQ, so if over here, um, I don't know if this is going to work, but it won't work because I can't really show you exactly what I'm doing, but just trust what I'm saying is what I'm doing. So that's my line six helix, right? Now you can get random pedals that are going to do it like an octave pedal and um, set up EQ chains and stuff like that. But what I do with my helix is I build a, a, a chain that is specific to each sound. And I am intentionally building the chain so that it will then deliver itself to the, the RC300 in a very effective way and sound good. Now, say I do my octave pedal, I want my sub bass to pump through. And then I also need a little bit of the, the bass to pop out there as well. So typically I'm boosting like low EQs and then like low mids, and that's what I'm doing. Uh, and then it sounds pretty nice. It's not that bad, right? Sounds pretty good. Um, it will do the job. You do, like, And the other thing with this is you don't need to be fancy. Um, if you think you're going to get this to sound like a record, you're not going to get it to sound like a record. This is part of the thing of like when I say earlier, when like what looper do you get and things like that. Spend the money on the shit that's good because it's immediately going to get you so much further than these things um this is a great loop pedal but it is not going to get you the results if you're like oh i want to sound like like especially if you look at my streams if you look at my streams and you're like i want to get the sound of lawn it's like there's no chance absolutely no chance you can do this and it is a visible different like the the dis the it's a visible dis di uh, difference because the fact you see there's only two outputs there's one output here you look at the the looper x has four of them it's like what it, this thing is this thing is doing nothing compared to what the Looper X is doing. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, you're not going to get this to sound amazing. Uh, you will get it to sound good. And for some people, good is great. Uh, for me, for a very long time, good was great. Till I discovered you could do more with a better pedal. And then I got the better pedal. Um, now, the bass... Like the, I will focus on my EQ on my Helix to be like, okay, well, I want the bass to pop out and I want the drums to pop out. So on the drum track that I use, so like typically I won't use the guitar to do the smacking. If I, like when I used to use my Helix uh, properly with the RC300, I actually would, I put my, my vocal mic, went into my Helix. And then what I did was I, um, I boosted at around like 70 to 80 hertz my beatbox mic uh, and I like cranked it like crazy. So then, and then I also cranked around like uh, 2K to 3K for the 
And so my would come through really, really clean through my beatbox mic, um, which was plugged into my Helix. So when it went into the RC300, the signal that the RC300 was getting was a really bass heavy and snare heavy sound. So I could simulate the kick snare very, very well. So think when you're thinking about sound, you wanna be like, okay, I need to get that sound perfect before it gets to the Helix. Like the the goal is like, I mean, so before it gets to the RC300, be like, whatever you're using to model sound, um, you need to get it good before it gets to the RC300. Um, that's not to say that you can just plug the microphone in there and do beatbox. I've done that plenty of times. Uh, it's just that when I was doing the stream, typically it was harder to get the beatbox to pop out very, very cleanly. And so that's where I was like, you know what, I can mess with this Helix and it has like a microphone input and I can set up like a special chain for it. And that's what I did. Put compression on it, put a, a really low, like a great EQ, which had like a low boost and stuff like that. So it could really bring out the beatbox. Um, but it would just sound garbage if I was vocally singing over it. <laughs> but that um, that is what it is. And then obviously I mixed the guitar before it came into the RC300. And then all I did with the RC300 when I was mastering the sound um, became like setting up the faders that you see over there. Uh, where's my finger? Oops, it goes like this. So you see those faders over there. That was the only time that I, I, I set up the actual sound for that one. So that's pretty much all you want to think about when it comes to mastering the sound on the RC300. And the same concept goes for the RC30. Like get it really good before it comes into the RC30 and then you're going to get really great results. And then then depending on like where it gets delivered to, like what speaker it goes to, what mixer it goes to, things like that, um, then you it becomes very easy because then you're just like mixing for the room. You already know that the mix that's coming into it already is great. Um, you're already getting great sound into the 300 uh, and you don't want to get like, you're not being like, oh, how can I fix it and patch it up? How can I make the beat? Because then if you start trying to, emphasize different parts of the RC300, you're going to mess with other things like the monitoring guitar. Like say I boosted the crap out of the the bass part, then like all my guitar stuff's gonna sound really dry and like missing all the shimmer. You, but yeah. So that's how I would approach um, the mixing and mastering of the stuff, uh, understanding how to get good audio out of the RC300. So hopefully that helps you guys and um, yeah, have fun with it. Uh, it is a great pedal, but um, it's definitely not a Looper X. And um, yeah, so let me know if this uh, these videos help you because um, I'm not super enthusiastic about these pedals anymore. <laughs> I've kind of been like, fuck these things, I'm done. Uh, but if you want me to do a more energetic video and be like, oh my God, I love this thing, it's so great. Um, I can do one, but uh, it is what it is. You know, I'm being, I'm being authentic, right? That's what they say on YouTube, be authentic. Be your be yourself. And myself does not like these pedals anymore. <laughs> In fact, this pedal right now, this one, it's gone. It disappears after I finish recording this video. So I'm, I'm very hyped. Goodbye, my lover. Goodbye, my friend. You have been the one. You've been the one for the stream. Whoa. What's up, Looper X? Anyway, it is what it is. All right. I'll catch you guys very, very soon.